Hello, Internet. Today we're going to talk about feedback. What is feedback and why is it one of the most common techniques in touch designer and computer graphics? Welcome to the Touch Designer 101 series. Today it's time to explore one of my favorite techniques, which continues to create sometimes unpredictable and captivating visual results. Let's break down this video. One, the mirror analogy and what feedback is. Two, infinite mirror effect. Three, motion trails. Four, simulating decay and dissolve effects. And five, custom component for more feedback techniques. Chapter one, the magic mirror analogy. Imagine you have a magic mirror. When you look into this mirror, it doesn't just show you your reflection. It also remembers and mixes your past reflections with the current one. Each time you move, this mirror blends the images of your previous positions with your new one, creating an infinite series of images of yourself. Similarly, the feedback top in Touch Designer is an operator for generating recursive, self-referential visual effects. It operates by capturing the current frame, storing it, and then feeding it back into the system to be processed and mixed with the incoming frames. Just like the magic mirror, it creates dynamic and evolving visual effects by continuously blending past and present frames. Before we continue, if you're completely new to Touch Designer, you only need to know one thing for this video, how to call operators from the menu. Press the tab key to open the pop-up window with different types of operators marked with colors. Select the top operator section, type the name of the operator you're looking for, and it will highlight for easy selection. Click the operator's name and drag it into the network. If you want to call another type of operator, like an LFO, repeat the previous steps, but this time select the CHOP tab to call an LFO. If you want to learn more about operators, you can check out the video linked in the description. Normally, I don't show the pop-up window in my tutorials, so remember what I just taught you. Chapter 2. Infinite Mirror Effect By recursively transforming and feeding back an image, you can create a mirror-like tunnel effect that appears to go on infinitely. Let's create one. Create a circle operator followed by a feedback and a transform operator. Finally, add a composite and connect the circle operator to the second input of the composite. Add an RGB key to set the background to black. And as always, an out at the end of the network to visualize the composition. Don't forget to select all the operators except the out and choose output resolution set to parent panel size. Perfect, I'll reset the feedback because the circle looks squashed. Now let's continue by adjusting the parameters of the circle operator because I want a black fill and a thin white border. So you can copy this values. Here's the magic of using feedback, which you need to understand really well. As you can see, the composite is adding both the original image from the circle and the image coming from the feedback, which will be manipulated with a transform operator to create various types of movement. This is great because it allows us to generate numerous effects. For this to work, you need to drag the composite into the feedback. In the composite, select Add as the blend mode. Select the feedback and click Pulse to reset the process. Right now, nothing happens because the image from the circle isn't moving, so it's just adding itself infinitely without showing any result. What we need to do is change something even slightly in the transform to see a result in the feedback. So select the transform and change the scale. As we lower the scale, we'll get this infinite effect. As you can see, as I lower the scale, we start to see this infinite mirror effect. Depending on the values you use for the scale, the separation between each circle can be smaller or larger. We can manipulate the parameters of the circle to try other results, such as converting the circle into a polygon and playing with the number of sides. If you want to make it more interesting, we can go back to the transform to add continuous movement to the rotation. For this, we'll use the classic script abstime.seconds. If you feel it's too slow, you can multiply it by any number you like. To finish this part, a final trick. If you go to softness in the circle and slightly adjust the values, you get a depth of field effect where the outer parts of the image blur and the center stays more focused. Retro moment. In late 70s, pioneers in computer graphics, such as John Whitney and others, began incorporating feedback loops into their work, allowing for more precise control and new artistic possibilities. Chapter three, motion trails. Motion trails are created by adding movement to the source image and adjusting the image's opacity using a level top after the feedback top. 
Let's create one. We'll use the composition from the first example. Just copy and paste it, and connect the final operator to the out, so we can visualize what we're doing. We start by removing the transform operator and replacing it with a level operator. Perfect. Now let's change the parameters of the circle operator as follows. I recommend that you reset the feedback each time you make changes to the source image to ensure everything is functioning correctly. Perfect. I think I want the circle to be smaller, so I will adjust it. And don't forget to reset the feedback to see the results. Now let's create an LFO because I need some movement. And now let's clone this LFO because we need two to manipulate the X and Y positions of the circle. Select the first LFO and copy this values. Go to the second LFO and use this parameters. Don't worry if it looks chaotic now. What we want is to achieve a smooth circular motion. Reset both LFOs to synchronize the starting point of the values. Also, reset the feedback and now we get this movement. Now let's move on to the more interesting part. Select the level operator, go to the post tab, and subtly lower the opacity values. You'll notice that we are leaving a trail every time the circle is rotating. What if we start playing with other values, like the diameter of the circle? To do this, create another LFO followed by a math operator. Set the math operator to the following values. And use this values in the new LFO. Once you have changed the ranges on the math, we'll reference it to the radius values. This gives us a movement where the circle grows and shrinks based on the LFO, adding another layer of dynamics. Let's change a little the size of the radius. Now I am changing some parameters in the circle. Just change the border width and use different colors for fill and border. Let's clone this LFO and experiment with different parameters. If you wish, you can copy the ones I'm going to use. But since I'll be using them to manipulate the color, I think it really depends on personal preference. Feel free to experiment with different values. Once you finish setting the parameters for the LFO and the math, you can map the values to the colors of the circle, both to the fill and the border. Now select the first composite operator to see how the colors you chose are working. Select over as a blending mode. Next, I'll add a blur effect after the circle to create a much softer texture. You can try different values here to see what works best for you. As you can see, we've created a very smooth and simple trail effect. In the next chapter, we'll take this to a much more interesting level, retro moment. The origins of feedback and graphics can be traced back to early experiments with analog video systems in the 1960s, where artists like Nam Jun Paik and researchers started using video cameras to create feedback loops with monitors. This analog technique produced complex and dynamic visual patterns that fascinated both artists and engineers. As computer graphics technology developed, these principles were adapted to digital media. Before we continue, thank you all for watching and subscribing. Reaching over 800 subscribers in three weeks has exceeded my expectations. I'm excited that so many of you enjoy my content. However, 78.1% of viewers haven't subscribed yet. If you find my videos helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It makes a huge difference in helping me create more high quality touch designer tutorials. Let's work together to reduce this number. Chapter four, simulating decay and dissolve effects. Now that you understand the basics of feedback, we can start adding some operators to achieve different results. Like this kind of plasma thing, and I, if you try harder, maybe you can simulate some clouds or fire using just feedback. Okay, let's copy the last network and again, connect to the out operator. Perfect. Let's start by changing some parameters of the circle. First, remove the animation that generates movement. I don't want the circle to disappear entirely, so we'll adjust the mapping range we're using in the math operator. 
Next, we'll create another LFO and set it to more dynamic parameters than before. I'll map this new LFO to the fill color. Let's tweak the color a bit and add this new LFO again. Here you can really choose any colors you like. I'm trying to find a color movement that will work better later on. You can map the LFO to R, G, or B values as you like and experiment with different settings. If you want, you can copy what I'm doing, but I encourage you to play around with colors that you find more appealing. This looks pretty good, perfect. Now let's create a new sequence of operators. So start by copying the new operators I'm gonna add. Create a noise operator and connect the noise to the second input of the displace operator. Connect the blur operator to the first input of the displace operator, and then replace the connections of the displace operator as follows. Perfect. Go to the common tab of the noise operator and select parent panel size. Then copy the following parameters. Finally, we'll animate the noise with the classic script abs time.seconds. Now that we have the sphere deforming and constantly changing colors, let's add some more elements to the network. Create the following operators. Add a displace operator, followed by a blur operator. Finally, add a composite operator and connect the blur operator twice to the composite operator. You'll understand why in a moment. Perfect. Let's parameterize these new operators. Copy the following values. Go to the composite operator and select negate as the blending mode. Here comes the most interesting part. If we reference the blur within the feedback loop, we'll get a completely different effect from what we had before, almost like a plasma ball. I'll set the opacity to one in the level operator. I'm also gonna create a couple more operators. Create a new composite operator. And select multiply for brighter, more saturated colors. Insert a sixth composite operator and select negate as the blending mode again. This will give us a reflective effect that resembles a plasma texture. Remember that in the first composite operator, you can experiment with different blending modes, and each will give you different results. For example, using add or overlay produces quite contrasting results. You can clearly manipulate the values of the noise operator and start creating a different sensation in the circle which will be reflected in this plasma-like effect. You can also parameterize the circle, for example, by increasing the border values or removing them completely, always resulting in changes in the composition. Here, I'm gonna show you a file where I made some changes to the parameters that I think improve the plasma effect. Basically, I adjusted the values of the LFOs, but the network remains the same. If you want to keep experimenting, you can insert more operators like a mirror or an edge to blend and create more variations of this composition, which is fundamentally based on using feedback. But it can also lead to discovering other patterns, forms, or compositions. You can keep adding more operators to find different results. Remember, creativity emerges the more we experiment, so feel free to explore. Sometimes, we don't even know exactly what we're doing, and that's one of the things I enjoy most about Touch Designer. You can let intuition guide you and discover paths you wouldn't find otherwise. Great, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And before I go, I have a big surprise for you. Chapter five, custom component for more advanced feedback techniques. I've created a custom component that includes the techniques I've mentioned in the tutorial so that you can experiment with all the possibilities of the three effects I taught you earlier and more. If you wanna get this component, you can find it on my Patreon 
where you'll also find a short tutorial video explaining how to use it fully. The feedback techniques is particularly popular because it can produce organic and evolving visuals, making it ideal for live performances, installations, generative art, or crafting visual effects. Additionally, the feedback top is easy to integrate with other techniques. And since it is one of the operators that produces quick results, it is common for us to want to use it before starting with more complex techniques in Touch Designer. For this reason, it has become a quite common operator within the Touch Designer universe. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.